Hey guys, so I know what you're thinking, what the hell am I doing in the third row of this enormous family SUV? Well, it's not always that I do this, but it's actually a really comfortable place to be in. Um, I wouldn't want to spend too many hours at the back here or even perhaps share this space with anybody else because I'm sitting with my legs wide open. But if I had to, I think I could. And that's the beauty of the new Kia Sorento. It's the spaciousness and its functionality. Now, if I need to get out of here, I have two ways. I suggest you get aside. So, there's either this button over here that I can press to collapse the seat, or there's another button over here which I can press, which I'll do now. But this is actually to lower the seats to store stuff. So if I were to put this back in place, let me figure this out. The proper way to get out of here would be to press this button. See how it retracts forward. And a big guy like me can actually get in and out of the third row of the new Kia Sorento quite easily. And that, my friends, is the beauty of the Kia Sorento, which is by itself quite a looker as well, isn't it? So there are three variants of the Sorento available in the market right now. This is the two-wheel drive entry-level version priced at 211,500 ringgit. The one after this is the two-wheel drive version as well, but that is a six-seater with captain chairs in the second row seat. And that is priced for 236,000, roughly around that region. And then the top of the line version is the all-wheel drive six-seater version and that retails for roughly about 255,000 ringgit. So if you want a Kia Sorento and everything that it has to offer, you have to be willing to fork out more than 200,000 200, ringgit, actually 211,000 ringgit. So it goes up against the likes of the Volkswagen Tiguan Allspace, the Mazda CX-8, and perhaps even the Hyundai Santa Fe, which I haven't driven yet, so I'm not going to comment so much on that. Um, and basically, I think it does a better job because the CX-8, even though it's a nice car to drive, is a little bit on the smaller side. Mazdas prioritize uh, interior quality and drivability. Uh, the Volkswagen Tiguan Allspace is spacious as well, but not as spacious as this. And none of those cars in my books look as good as the Sorento, because this is obviously a great design. So what makes it such a good looking machine? Well, the three projector headlamps for one are just unique, one of a kind. And then this massive grille extends from headlight to headlight. And this pinch point over here is known as the tiger nose pinch. Make of that what you will. Actually, that's not a bad thing. It's obviously a good looking design. Uh, from the side, you get 18 inch wheels which is not really a bad thing because if you have this much rubber separating the road from the car, usually it translates to comfort because there's a lot of rubber to soak up all those bumps and vibrations and such. And then over here, this is known as a shark's fin. Uh, just a design element, nothing to comment about that. And here though, some people say, is the best part about the Kia Sorento, this vertical, brake lights, tail lights. And uh, the one thing that you gotta know is that there is only one reverse light for the Kia Sorento. And that is placed over here, my friends. And I've reversed this, I've seen people reversing this and you can barely see that light coming on. So that, and I think, can be quite, I wouldn't say dangerous, but you really have to look out for that. But functionality is again the name of the game for the Kia Sorento because, check this out. That's 
an enormous boot. But with the third row of seats in place, there's hardly enough space even for a laptop bag. But if you press these buttons over here, oh no, that's for the second row seats. If you do this, Now that just makes it an enormous boot space. And the great thing about this Kia Sorento is that if you need more space, you have these buttons over here that can collapse the seats all at the press of a button. But if you need to put it back in place, you have to go back and do it manually. Not a deal breaker for me, especially for a car that costs 211,500 ringgit. And I really appreciate the fact that the third row seats, each passenger gets their own air conditioning vent as well as their own type A USB port. But not only that, rarely do you see a car or an SUV that offers its own blower setting for the third row seats and that's over here. So because this is a family SUV, we are going to do this this review in reverse. Usually we start with the engine, the driver's side and such. But the Sorento is such a great family car that that is the direction that I'm gonna take for this uh, review. And uh, voila, space, lots and lots of it. Uh, you get type A USB ports, you get a 12 watt auxiliary socket, you got your own air conditioning vents, you have a cup holder over here, another cup holder over here. You get more cup holders over here. Yeah. So I think I made my point. The other thing that I'd like to point out is that, remember how I was telling you that if you need to get into the third row seats, you press this button here, Let's see what happens. But that's not the only way to do that. There's another button over here. Press this and So again, utility, versatility, spaciousness. Of course, you get your own isofix mounts as well. But since we are here, I really wish that the Sorento, the two-wheel drive version, came with its own, uh, came with leather seats actually, because fabric, yeah, just doesn't cut it for a car that priced at 211,000 ringgit. Uh, fabric seats, would, uh, leather seats would have been nice. But fabric seats aside, this is a nice cabin to be in. It's a beautiful car to drive, uh, one that is focused on comfort. It's not overly exciting. The uh, Multilink McPherson Struts suspension systems is more focused on, uh, on passenger comfort, which is a good thing, actually. And uh, it's just that if you're one of those type of drivers that like a firmer feel to the hand to the steering wheel and such you may find the handling of the Kia Sorento to be perhaps a little bit on the sloppier side but your passengers are not going to be complaining because the interior does a brilliant job the suspension does a brilliant job at soaking up all the uh, bad roads and such and let's start this thing up you get I don't know what the sound is, it's just incredibly annoying every time you start up the car. But then you get three USB ports over here guys and a key wireless charger and lots and lots of storage space, storage space here, 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 here and here. Now this is a personal note for me, uh, just like to point out that uh, I have a very big water tumbler and never have I come across a car that can actually accommodate this large water tumbler anywhere inside it. So, which is brilliant. You get a 10.25 inch infotainment system uh, complete with uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto wired. Uh, and then you get another I think 5 inch or 4 point something inch digital screen over here which are flanked by analog dials. Again, very simplistic, very not something overly complicated which is great. Um, you also get stuff like a... This is quite unique to me, I'm not quite sure this is the only car that I've ever sat in that has 
air conditioning vents that perhaps do a great job at cooling your knee or if you're wearing shorts perhaps it might do a good job at cooling places where the sun don't shine yeah anyway it's there to keep the cabin cool but other than that though uh, all jokes aside you also get a drive mode selector over here that gives you four driving modes. You get comfort, eco, sport, and smart. I'm guessing smart adjusts the uh, accelerator pedal and the steering wheel feel together, perhaps with the uh, gearbox, perhaps not so much there. Uh, and definitely not the suspension because it's not adaptive. But anyway, the point that I'm trying to get at is it will learn your driving style and adjust the accelerator, the steering feel accordingly. Uh, other than that though, I really got to point out that I'm a huge, huge fan of the cameras of Kia cars. They're incredibly sharp, you know. Um, so I think there are a lot of car makers that can learn a lot from Kia and Hyundai as well. So they do a brilliant job at this. Talk, so talking about that, the two-wheel drive seven-seater version of the Sorento only gets a reverse camera. You don't get 360 cameras uh, in this version. But again, uh, not a deal breaker. It would be handy to be able to use that to park this car because it is massive, yes. For a car that is designed for comfort and spaciousness, naturally, the, it has to be uh, on the bigger side of things. So uh, parking this thing can be a challenge. 360 cameras, yeah, I think that would be a nice addition. Now let's talk a little bit about the technology that the Sorento has to offer, the safety tech. You know, it comes with things like high beam assist, which automatically uh, adjusts the headlights if you are in driving in a, on dark roads, it will automatically illuminate, um, uh, adjust the high beams of the headlights. And then it goes on, you also get blind spot collision warning, blind spot uh, collision avoidance assist, and on the flagship model, uh, you get blind spot view monitor so it actually has cameras on the side and you have uh, in this model you get rare cross traffic collision avoidance assist i guess it's automatic braking if there if you're reversing and there's an oncoming car you have lane keep assist annoying but handy they get driver attention warning uh, yeah so handy as well especially on long distance drives lane keep assist uh, and smart cruise control with stop and go, basically adaptive cruise control, which in my books is a must have. And the Sorento, all every model has that. Now powering the Sorento is a 2.5 litre petrol engine making 177 PS and 232 Newton meters of torque. Power is channeled to the front wheels through a six speed gearbox. Now, you may think that that's not a lot of power, but it's good enough to move the humongous Kia Sorento. Now, fuel efficiency is rated at roughly about 8.2 liters per, ki uh, per 100 kilometers. And the Sorento has a 67 liter fuel tank. Right now, we are here in Sedang. I drove all the way here from Damansara. The onboard computer is telling me that I, I have an average fuel consumption rating of 8.2 liters per 100 kilometers, as I said. And right now, at this moment, I picked up this car yesterday, and I have a remaining range of roughly about 585 kilometers, which is not too bad. From a driving perspective, the Kia Sorento is hard to fault. Well, it does almost everything rather well. Um, it's quiet in here, it's quite spacious, it's comfortable. I'm still gonna complain about the fact that it, a 211,000 ringgit car doesn't come with leather seats, what is the world coming to? Um, but besides all of that, I also like the fact that it's just a very easy, simple, near analog driving experience. I mean, it's still a regular gear shifter. Uh, I know some of the Sorentos in other markets around the world get a rotating gear shifter, electronic gear shifter. So in that sense, that's quite good. Um, I also like the fact that the meter panel is 
and a log. Wow, some people are just really dangerous on the road, man. Like this guy over here. Gila Kerapa. Anyway, from all of that perspective, it does everything quite well. If I have to complain though, I would like to complain about the fact that the lane keep assist system keeps turning back on every time you get back into the car and drive again. That it just doesn't go, it doesn't have a memory setting. It just doesn't memorize the fact that you don't like it and you don't want it to be turned on. And every time that you want it to, turn, to be turned off, there's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's a bloody eight step process to turn it back off every time you get into the car. That's a bloody nuisance, guys. Kia, yeah, come on. I know it's there for safety and all, but some of us actually can drive without the lane keep assist. So, that's the only thing that I'm going to complain about. Um, but besides that, quality is or does feel like it's going to last quite a while. So, other than that lane keep assisting, the driving experience of the Sorento is one that I think you will find that there's nothing wrong with it. And that's a great thing. At 211,500 ringgit, the Kia Sorento two-wheel drive seven-seater variant is actually not too bad of a buy in my books. The, the competition such as the CX-8 is considerably more expensive and the Volkswagen Tiguan Allspace does not have as much space as the Kia Sorento. So if you're looking for a seven-seater, the Sorento is definitely worth a look. And the only niggle in my books, something that I think should have been better, is the fact that it should have came with leather seats. Other than that, it checks all my boxes. Let me know what you think about the new Kia Sorento two-wheel drive seven-seater in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Do consider subscribing.